Hey, what's happening, you guys? This is Joel. I'm your host. Got my co-host over here, Coach Emily. She's a superstar. She does nutrition. She does it a lot better than you do. I can guarantee that. And we just want to welcome you to the, to the Proclivity Podcast. If you don't know by now, we do one thing. We do one thing real, real well. We create healthier bodies and happier lives by harnessing the benefits of metabolic flexibility and the power of our words. Yes, your words truly matter. They will take you to the destination in which you point them. And if you do it right, and you get a metabolically flexible body and you're, you're speaking right, you're going to start living the life you want and the body that you love. Don't believe us? Test us. We're the best. And I say that with, I mean, if you could see me on the proclivity method right now, it's, a, it's my serious face because I know that we're the best. That's what it is. You want to challenge us? Bring it. I dare you to. You know who was also the best? Eight sleep. Eight sleep's the best. It cools your body throughout the night so that you can get deeper sleep. Don't have a lot of time to sleep? Cool. Get eight sleep. Head to eightsleep.com. Use the promo code Joel. Get $150 off. This is a real deal. I sleep on it every night. My room is now not called my bedroom. It is called the pod. Because we also support Molecule, which is a air purifier. Emily has one. I have one. I have, I have controlled uh, climate, AC. I have the right lights in my room. I mean, y'all, if, if you want to know what my pod's all about so I can get the best sleep, just hit me up. Find me, find me on, uh, on Instagram, Joel Cochran underscore. Do you got, do you, I, I would say that you have a pod. You're, you're, you're pretty potty. Potty. Is that a thing? Did I just say potty? <laughs> I mean, you have a child and so now you're, and you're probably working on pod, potty training. And so now yep. that just totally ruined it for me. I don't know if it did for you. I didn't, my brain didn't even go there, but now, now it is. So that's all right. Take yeah. I, I have the molecule. Mm -hmm. I have all the. I have like the light that gradually increases and decreases yes. and I like walk around with it at night. It's great. Yeah, gotta keep, gotta keep it. Make your bedroom a cave, you guys, the best you can. Cold, dark, no lights. Keep your phone away from your, your uh, bed stand. And, you know, somebody the other day was like, yeah, but what if emergency happens? Okay, one out of the million times that an emergency has happened. And you know what you can do? Technology is like crazy these days. You can create a list on your phone in which people can get through on your do not disturb. So if it's a true emergency, you know what they should do? They first and foremost shouldn't text. Anybody who's texting an emergency, <laughs> it's not an emergency. Let's just put it what, what it is, okay? You should be calling if it's a true emergency. And then you have your favorites list so your drunk friends can't call you in the middle of the night to tell you how much they love you. I don't know if you have people. Hopefully they'll leave a voicemail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? If you if you love me that much, leave a voicemail. Right? If you're that drunk and you love me that much, leave a voicemail. If anybody can relate to this, give me a, like a virtual fist pump if you're if you're listening right now. Thank you. I know somebody did. Hopefully. Coach Emily, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, doing well. Uh, you know, a lot of people in my family, my immediate family, my husband, my mom, mother-in-law, my son, they're all sick. Mm. So <laughs> managing my best with that. And I'm proud of myself for, for pulling through the way I am. Doing pretty good. Doing good. Let me ask you, Coach Emily, are you sick? <clears throat> I will not lie. I have a little congestion, but nowhere near the level of... Uh, everyone else. Mm. I wonder if that's just a proclivity thing. <laughs> I, I have lots of uh, sick remedies, but yes, committing uh, myself to health over the years, 
I'm not going to say that did not play a role. There's a lot of negations in there. <laughs> That's okay. We'll take negations at, well, at this point. I'll, I'll tell you what, guys. She's surrounded by sickness. Listen, y'all, if you want to become superhuman, we, we offer that. We offer the ability for you to be superhuman. You just got to come over. We have... We have a 12-week program. It's called the Proclivity Method. We work on your language. We work on your nutritional habits. We're talking lifestyle change. We're not just talking about, hey, here's a, a three-month, like, eh. I mean, the proof's in the pudding. I went and deadlifted 405 the other day on a three-day fast. Emily's surrounded by sickness, and she's like, what sickness? Listen, y'all. <laughs> If you want to become superhuman, come join the superhero team. We got to come up with a name. The Fantastic right. Proclivity Unlimited, Unlimited because we don't want to limit anybody. We want everybody on the team. Right. Yep, I'll have to think about that one. Yeah. That if was... anyone has any ideas, let us know. Yeah, shoot, shoot us something because that, that wasn't my best marketing. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about what we're getting in today. Protein. Let's do it. Protein, 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 and more protein. There's three different macronutrients, protein, fat, carbohydrates, and today our focus is on protein. You ready to do this? I'm ready. I love it. I love it. So let's first start off. Protein. Why do we need it? Why do we need it? There's, there's going to be a lot of people out there First, we're fighting the, I don't want to say fighting, we're, we're working uh, uh, against some information that, that could be relevant, may not really be relevant, um, yet a, a lot of information that's out there is talking about, yeah, we really don't need that much protein. You, know, you, you, don't, you don't need it. Um, you know, I'm very wary on anything that is being told to me via the uh, government. I'm not sitting here talking. Let's just say we all remember 25 years ago when they made the, the, the pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. Eat as many processed carbohydrates as you can. Thanks, guys. That really put us in the hole. <laughs> look where we are now. <laughs> look where we are now. 75% of Americans are overweight and obese. Not weird. Is that? An, anyways, we're not going to get into that. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> So when it comes to, to what they suggest in protein, it's actually a lot lower than what we suggest. So let's dive into it. What is protein? Why do we need protein? Yeah, yeah. protein is my favorite macronutrient because I believe it to be the most important if you are going to look at all three. Ooh. That is what I base all my meals around. That's how I think about building my plate every single day, every single time. Uh, but Protein is important for everything that our body's building. So it's the building blocks of our tissues, our organs, our cells, our muscles. And all of those, of course, have an effect on our overall health and longevity and much, much more. <laughs> so it is very, uh, it's very much a necessity for our day-to-day -day life. Yeah, because, I mean, it's the building blocks. Like, we're talking foundation. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to build a house. You need a foundation first. I mean, we're exactly. not we're not taken away from any of the other ma macronutrients, but protein's pretty dang vital, isn't it? Yeah, you need it for your bones, for your bone density, bone health. Your, like I said, your organs and tissues. It can help your gut. It can help uh, rebuild some injured tissues in your body, and then help maintain or gain muscle mass, which is, again, super important for all, overall health. Okay. Well, and let's touch on that. We know, and and this is one thing that's a big stickler for for me. You guys, we live in a capitalistic society, meaning, aka, everyone's trying to sell you something, including us, right? And so, out there is like this, oh, like this constant, like protein bars, protein shakes, protein this, protein that. You you know, you need to get the protein that will help you recover from this workout. What, what, what is the difference in protein? There's whey protein, there's pea protein, there's the protein in protein bars, right? There's meat, there's chicken, there's poultry. 
what kind of protein is is out there and what what's the ones that we should be really focusing on yeah i will say there are those outliers out there people who can take different ratios of protein but for the most part for most of us we need to get proteins that are high in all the nine essential amino acids so that's the difference between different proteins plant animals and even within those like you said, chicken versus beef or pork or fish, there's different amino acid profiles. And those are what we're really looking at as far as what will build the best kind of muscle, what will have the best effect on our hormones, so on and so forth. So we're looking at amino acid profile, which is why we tend to recommend animal styled proteins because it has those in higher amounts. So the profile, the amino acid profile is, is um, greater or more efficient in in meats and is it red meats compared to white meats or anything like that well, what's the difference in the profile there yeah so uh most will have most animal meats such as chicken beef pork will have enough there um, beef chicken pork those are probably the highest uh, fish i believe is, might be a little bit lower um depending on the type um but especially relative to things such as peanut butter or quinoa or nuts and you know nuts and seeds in general, those are going to have either none at all or very low amounts, and we definitely need that balanced ratio of the different types of amino acids for the uh, muscle protein synthesis to build muscle to do all the things we just mentioned that protein does efficiently. And, and there's a difference between essential and non-essential. Right. right. Yeah. So essential means we need to get it from our diet. Non-essential is something that our body can make on its own. Got you, got you, got you. And, and so with, with people that are out there and they're, they're not, they don't tend to eat a lot of meat. Are they able to be able to put on, you know, muscle mass and so on and so forth? Is that something that they can do or is it not going to be really challenging to be able to get, again, we're talking essential amino acids outside of what we can create. Are they going to be able to get those essential amino acids uh, without consuming meat? They can, but yes, it is more challenging. So you can get it from more plant type sources. Um, but usually you have to eat a lot more of those and be very strategic in how you consume those. Meaning you can pair rice and beans to get more balanced amino pro, uh, amino acid profile, but you're typically having to eat a lot more of those. So for example, six cups of quinoa is what you're going to have to consume to get the same amount, um, of leucine that's in four ounces of chicken, which is mm. just crazy. And so typically when you're doing an uh, non-animal protein source diet, so plant-based, uh, you are typically eating way more carbs and more fiber, which can be problematic for a lot of people. In what ways? So if you're too high in carbs, you know, the, the main issue around that is your blood sugar. So some people can have energy issues, pre-diabetes, diabetes, things like that. Um, fiber can be digestive issues. So some people can handle certain fibers. Some people cannot. Depends on your individual microbiome, gut microbiome. And one of the big things that we talk about here at Proclivity is metabolic flexibility. And so if we're, if we're sitting there and we're not getting those essential uh, amino acids via meat, then we tend to ingest, like you said, more carbohydrates. And so then the body goes to wanting to use that fuel source solely or rely on it much higher amounts is carbohydrates, right? So, it, it, and I'm not... Right. I'm not here to, to point anybody out, but it, everybody knows like the like the skinny fat, right? Profile. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And that's because there's not a ton of muscle mass there. Yet there's a higher intake of, of carbohydrates, so blood sugar is higher. They're not burning the, the fat because they're not in a metabolically flexible body. And, and so really, if anybody's listening out there and like, oh, man, yeah, I haven't been able to get to my body composition. And if it's because of religious beliefs or, you know, um, you, you personal beliefs when it comes to not eating meat, like we totally support that. We're not telling you that you, you should Yet, if you're one of those people out there that was like, well, I heard I should just eat vegetables all the time. There's some, 
there's some missing information there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Yes, totally. Coming back to that metabolic flexibility, guys. Coming back to that metabolic flexibility. All right. So understanding that we have the essential and the non-essential amino acids, right? They're the building blocks for, for life. Is there a certain time that we should be ingesting protein? And now that we've kind of gotten into it, right? We brought the government into it. and get, Talk to us about when should we be eating our protein? How much protein should we mm -hmm. be eating? Yeah, so... Out of all three macronutrients, I typically recommend getting protein equally distributed throughout the day. And so if I were to choose one time a day that's the most important, it would be either the morning or right after your workout because that's going to help with your muscle repair. Um, but typically, if you're going to have, say, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you're going to shoot for an equal amount of protein at each meal. Because ideally, for females, what I recommend as a baseline or starting point is to get at least 90 grams of protein. And this is, again, for most females, in the taller you are or the more uh, the higher weight target you're going for, the more you're going to want to get. Um, and then for gentlemen, I recommend at least 120 grams as a starting point. And that's just as a starting point, right? Yeah. That's usually on the lower end, even. And what is it that the... It's not the was the FDA or CDC who 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 prescribes the like the amounts of protein or sodium or whatever you're supposed to get. Yeah, usually the uh, FDA has their recommended daily allowances. Uh, yeah, yeah. So and that's that's out like way less than that. Yeah, it's, it's 0.8 to 1.2 uh, per grams of or kilograms per pound or sorry kilograms per pound of or gram of protein. Yeah, a, a, a body weight, right? Is it body weight or, pro, or protein? Uh, so it's so it gets confusing because we look at things in terms of pounds versus mm. and then their recommendations are kilograms. So it's about it equates to about half your body weight, or mm. even less sometimes. So that's that's very much on the low end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe I saw something the other day. It was like, oh man, it was like f fifty grams or something a day for, for yeah, most that people, a lot. you know, and mm -hmm. so we're basically telling you, Hey, double it, double it for sure. And why are we saying that? What are the benefits of being able to have higher amounts of protein? Cause the, listen, we have clients who are, are resistant to that. Why, why is that? Why, why are people resistant to having more protein yet they're totally good with having you know more carbs and processed <laughs> you know grab a bag of chips right. but it's like phew, man right. a right four ounce steak Ooh, seems like a lot yeah there's there's definitely a couple of reasons i would say number one a lot of females are resistant because they think it's going to make them bulkier meaning like they put on a lot more weight or muscle mm -hmm. mass which is is very far from the tr the truth in reality because it is very hard to put on that much muscle mass to become bulky and it is also super hard to gain weight from eating too much protein. It just doesn't usually happen. It's, it's usually from an excess in calories of fat or carbohydrates. So that is the, usually the main reason um, that people are resistant. Some people are resistant because of, like you said, they look at steak and like, oh, I've heard that steak is bad for us because of cholesterol or saturated fat. Again, that's, that's mm. it's a confusing thing. We can get into another discussion about that, but that right. is another um, not myth basically yeah. um and then and then the other reason is yeah people there's there's some people who've been told that it can have uh kidney damage which again the studies on that are very poor um yeah. and that has become disproven so those are the main reason people would shy away from too much protein but the reason we want to eat more protein is because it's one of the best reasons in my opinion it is the most satiating macronutrient so especially if you're trying to prevent yourself from overeating it is going to satiate you for longer meaning you're not going to have as many cravings you're not going to be as hungry and eating more calories than you actually need so that would be number one for sure in my book and number two it's going to repair those muscles when you are doing resistance or strength training or any kind of exercise it's going to help build or maintain that muscle which again the more muscle we have usually the better I mean, to a certain extent of course um, but for most people we really want to be paying attention to maintaining or gaining muscle mass 
-hmm. for longevity and also because it helps us burn more calories at rest when we have more muscle. So lots mm. of good reasons. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and if we come back to the metabolic flexibility, I'm just thinking to myself, a lot of people out there, right, when we work with our clients, it's really trying to get them away from the processed foods. They've gotten, they're, they're burning one fuel source. Guys, a reminder on metabolic flexibility. You are flexible when you can use w both of the fuel sources, fat and or carbohydrates. You're inflexible when you're just using carbohydrates. And so what we do at Proclivity is we really want to make you metabolically flexible. And a good way to do that right out the gate when we're trying to switch them over from carbohydrates is to increase that protein intake, correct? Correct, because that's going to prevent you from needing to grab for another snack, most likely. Again, like I said, it's going to decrease cravings because you're more satiated. So adding in more protein can help you stretch that time between meals a little bit longer. So right out the gate, guys, if you're listening and you're like, man, I, I find myself hungry every two hours and I'm reaching for the bag of this or, you know, I want to get the chips this or the organic this, uh, switch it out. Have, have like what? Coach Emily is saying, have a bigger breakfast and focus on more protein. So at breakfast, how many grams should women be focusing on? How many grams should men be focusing on? Yeah, I would say for either of us, 30 to 50 grams is a great uh, number to keep in mind. So for the females, 30 guys, maybe 50, again, depending on the individual, but those are great starting points. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's what I think of when I'm building my meal. As you become familiar with about how many grams are in different foods, you can start to do that. And so what would that look like? What's a breakfast that would build? Or, or let's say, well, mm -hmm. you know, what's your go-to breakfast? I can say what mine is, mm -hmm. too, that, that gets to, to 50 grams. But what, what would that look yeah. like so people can visualize? Yeah, for me, I love eggs. I could have eggs for every single meal. <laughs> so I have anywhere from three to five eggs. If I have the three or four, the lower end, then I add another protein to it, whether it be something like seeds or nuts, a sausage, some bacon, something like that. Um, and then I may or may not add in some avocado or some veggies. Um, and then those might have like a couple grams here and there too. So usually three to five eggs and then add on from there depending on what I'm, what I have prepared and what I'm craving basically. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Cause for me to get to 50 grams of, of protein, um, I do a, a, a cup of Greek yogurt. I do three eggs, a chicken sausage. Um, and, and then I add in some nut butter into my, uh, mm -hmm. Greek yogurt. And that, that, you, that usually gets me to the, the, the marker of about 50 grams. And when I tell people that for my breakfast, they're like, oh, there's no way. That's just so much. Yep. And I, I know we're talking about protein right now, yet why is, it, why is it that people struggle so much in the mornings when it comes to, to eating a, a larger meal? What's the deal with that? Yeah, so there could be several reasons, but oftentimes people aren't as hungry first thing in the morning, which sometimes can be a digestive issue, and then we need to address that if that's the case. But oftentimes, mm -hmm. like, I would I would suggest first trying to wait until you are a little bit hungrier, and then you can eat more. We're so used to eating those little bites of a croissant, a muffin, some oatmeal, one thing of a little thing of yogurt, and we've just conditioned ourselves to that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but again, that's what gets us on that that cycle of needing to eat every two hours. And if we replace that with protein, that's going to extend that period. We're not going to be eating yes. as much. The body's going to move more towards burning fat than it is going to be burning mm -hmm. carbohydrates, which then brings me to the point. Can increasing your protein intake help you lose weight? Oh, for sure. Yes, that's one of my most favorite things to teach people about. <laughs> it is one of the biggest levers, for sure. How come? Yeah, the reason being is it, there are studies that shows that it does help your metabolism. Um, but the main reason being, it's more, it's more satiating. And it's going to 
prevent that blood sugar spike as much. It's mm-hmm. going to help store and utilize glucose better, meaning you're not going to be craving more foods and you're going to be uh, having more sustained energy throughout the day. Um, and, and yeah, those are the main reasons. You're less likely to overeat, period. Mm. Period. Period. There's, of course, other reasons, but that that is usually what they come down to. Right, right. So what would be the, the suggestions if somebody's sitting there and, and, I mean, first, should people should people track what their protein is starting tomorrow to get an idea of where they're at? And if they are sitting at 40 grams or 50 grams, what would be your suggestion in terms of, of moving forward to get more protein so that they can lean out and, and, and start working mm-hmm. on weight loss and metabolic flexibility? Yeah, so I definitely recommend trying to tra- either track your food or use Google to Google the types of food to get an approximate amount of how much protein you're getting in at each meal or overall throughout the day. Start simple. Um, like I said, the eggs. So one egg is six grams of protein. So three eggs is 18 grams. So that means I need to work a little bit more to add protein in to get to my 30 gram target mm-hmm. or at least that. Um, so I would look up chicken breast, look up, you know, whatever it is you do enjoy eating or have on the day to day, do a couple days worth or maybe even a week or two. So mm-hmm. you can start to become familiar and learn what is in the food that you're eating and what that portion size should look like. Sometimes people, uh, going back to your comment about like, oh, that's just too much for me eating, you know, a full chicken breast or a giant steak, like that's very difficult for me to eat. It's just too monotonous. It's, you know, it's hard for me to eat. It doesn't sound good. My, my advice to you is switching out the protein source within the meal. So like th- I said before, I have maybe three eggs and I throw a chicken sausage like you do too, Joel. Um, throw in that, that Greek yogurt has more protein. The nuts and seeds have a little bit of protein. So as you increase variety, it increases your, your palatability and, you know, basically like, oh, I can eat more of this. This sounds better. So you can eat more of it. So that's a good mm-hmm. thing when it comes to protein. Mm-hmm. Not a good thing when it comes to carbs and fat. We don't want to do that on, on those ends. As, um, we want to decrease that as much as possible. But for the protein, it helps us eat more if we increase the variety. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because, again, there's this stigmatism to like fats, right? Because we grew up with this pyramid you know, or if we didn't grow up with it, it was in our life at some point, right? Low fat, high carbs. So when people are like, oh, wait, bacon? I can have bacon for <laughs> breakfast? Like, isn't that, mm-hmm. that's like too much fat, isn't it? it? By being able to say, hey, it's okay, have some protein. Like, yep. it's okay, there's some fat in there. I mean, mm-hmm. Everybody's going to be slightly different, correct? Uh, Yet, I believe for the most part, a lot of the clients that that we have, they're living in this perpetual carbohydrate high world Mm -hmm. and they're terrified of fats and Mm -hmm. they're, they're terrified of protein because they feel like it's so heavy and it's going to, it's going to bulk me up. And so then they just try to constrict the amount of carbohydrates they have without adding in the the balance of appropriate fats, which, which balances out our hormones and helps in so many mm-hmm. different other facets, and then don't get enough protein. So therefore, muscle growth is not happening. So then our mm-hmm. basic basal metabolic rate is lower. So we're not burning as many calories through mm-hmm. the day. And our oh, the whole focus starts being about, oh, I just shouldn't have those that bag of chips, I just mm-hmm. need to resist it. I just mm-hmm. need to, nope, I just can't have it. I'll have it smaller or smaller and smaller and smaller. And it creates this. And this is why we work mindset, guys, is it cre- you start creating this reality. It's this false reality in your head of what you are to food. And when you rep something out time and time and time and time and time and time and time again, that's how your story becomes a reality. And what we do is we help you turn that around. Yes, we we set you up with the correct amount of proteins and fats and so on and so forth, but we also have to change around that mindset. Because if that mindset is eat like a bird and and carbohydrates and and fats like this, and it's going to make me be blank, or it's going to, I'm going to look like blank, we have to work that mindset of being able to switch it around and, and 
reconstruct that reality, that false reality that you've created. Does that sound about right, Coach Emily? Very much so. Um, That's why we do what we do because mindset and the nutrition piece, they are both equally important because like you said, if you're not getting that protein and then you're you're decreasing or you're trying to avoid fat um, and the protein, like too much protein, then that's going to cause us just to think about food all the time. And mm-hmm. it's going to cause blood sugar um, issues. We're going to have energy dips or, you know, all the things that we don't want. And so they're very much related. And so this is why we do both. Yeah, T- totally. And, and even when you were saying that, I was just thinking to myself, I was thinking about one of our clients and, uh, you know, the same time type, type of restrictive mindset and then a super stressful day, and then they get to the end of their day, and they all of a sudden have these crazy sugar cravings. And so then they end up going and having, you know, grabbing the bag of chips, doing the the salty sweet. And what does that mess up? Oh, their sleep. So then their sleep is messed up. So we're not recovering, we're not balancing. So then we wake up or we're cranky, <laughs> we're not feeling good. Now we're making poor decisions again. Guys, this isn't it's craving not, more. Yeah, <laughs> craving more. It's not vicious cycle. It's not just about you have to have the willpower not to eat that. If that's what you think di- you're like dieting is or your diet, right? And I don't even like using diet. Right, because when we think about diet, if you guys look up the definition of diet, it's just whatever a, a, a creature's natural habitat, what they eat. That's it. Mm-hmm. It's not saying there's no restriction, right, in right. the definition of diet. It's just this as humans, this is what we eat. Just like as wolves, this is their you know, natural diet in their habitat. And again, disconnecting that. And being able to have that appropriate mindset, being able to recognize that there's so many pieces when it comes to creating your diet, it's, it's, there's a lot to it. So Mm -hmm. as always, we're going to wrap this up. What are three things that people can start doing to be able to get more protein, which is going to help them with their cravings? which is then eventually going to help them lose weight. If their outcome is to lose more weight and we're going to point them towards protein, we know there's a billion different other things, but to get them started here, what are the three steps? Yeah. So number one, start being aware of how much protein you're getting. And when, like I said before, you could start tracking it by using an app like my fitness pal, um, there's several different ones out there you can use. Something that's easy for you that you'll actually use, you could even just use Google. So start tracking to see how much you're getting and how you need to adjust that. So then the second would be try and reach that goal of at least 30 grams of per meal. This could be for anyone. For guys, usually it is it should be a little bit higher. But in general, to start with that 30 gram mark, to see where you can go with that. Next, uh, I, would, I would say our, our goal oftentimes is to avoid snacking, especially if you're trying to work on body composition or lose weight. And so if you do have to have that snack as we're, you know, adjusting to that metabolic flexibility, metabolic flexibility, uh, we, we want to make sure those snacks do have a protein paired with them or they are protein based. So a lot of the times I see with my clients, their snack is an apple or a piece of fruit or a rice cake or something like that, and Mm -hmm. there's no protein there. And so that does Mm -hmm. two things. It spikes our blood sugar. It's going to cause more weight gain in storage. Um, And then it's also going to make us crave more food. So if you are going to have those things, pair them with a protein, at least maybe some nuts, nut butter, or protein bar, jerky, a hard-boiled egg, something like that. But ideally, we're getting more protein at mealtime, so we don't need that snack as much. So that would be – that would be – the main couple of things. And if I could add one more, I would say get some resistance training in there. That's going to help you maintain or increase that muscle mass at a healthy level. Because with weight training, it's going to help to absorb the protein uh, better. Yep. It's going to stimulate that protein synthesis. Yeah. There it is, you guys. And being able to have more muscle helps, right? Because again, if we're looking at what a lot of people look at, it's like, I just need to do cardio, 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 and I need to restrict the amount of carbohydrates I'm having. And this is where a lot of people are like, I just, I'm not getting the results. You know, adding, yeah. adding in some resistance training, 
adding in some protein, being okay with eating some healthy fats. We talked a lot about this the other day. We did a Tuesday Night Live. We showed that you can get a healthy meal, relatively healthy meal, at a Maverick gas station. We went through it. If you guys missed that, it's on IGTV, on the Proclivity Instagram page. Go to proclivity.co. It's there, and it was a good one. I had a lot of people reach out and be like, hey, that was really informed with that. I really like that. We were surprised even. It was good. It was a good experience. It was a fantastic experience. We, we, yeah, we touched on stuff that say, hey, this is reality. And that's, that's what we do. Mm-hmm. That's what we do here in, in Proclivity. Listen, guys, if you're ready to take a step on changing your life and your body, reach out to us. Go to www.proclivity.co. Check out what we have on there. Just check it out. If you want to get more information, you can book a clarity call. You get Emily and I live for 45 minutes. That's an expensive call, you guys. I'm just going to put it out there. It's an expensive call. Even if you decide or we decide that the proclivity method isn't the best thing for you, you are still going to gain incredible amounts of information with Emily and I on the phone for 45 minutes. So... If you want to do that, we'd love to talk to you. The Proclivity Method is a 12-week program where we focus on the, the harnessing the benefits of metabolic flexibility so you burn more fat. You find the stable diet that works for you, and we create the ability to look at ourselves and food differently by working our language, which creates different stories, which creates a different reality. That's what we do. And we would love to have you. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us. You can go to our Instagram page, Joel Cochran underscore Emily Rodella. You can also go to our Instagram page, proclivity.co on Instagram. You can reach out to us at team at proclivity.co. We're here to help. We would love to be able to help you. If you have any questions, those are our places to go. Coach Emily, it's always great. Thank you so much, Joel. Love it. Go get some, go crush some protein. Dude, we're, we're all going to go crush some protein today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. Until next time, we'll see you back here on the Proclivity Podcast next week. We got a special guest. Next week, right? Is it Michaela? <laughs> I hope so. I believe so. Next week, episode 44 check it out. We're going to be here. Thanks guys for tuning in. We'll check you out next time.